The biggest mistake that new streamers make is thinking they deserve to be watched from day one. You need to completely change how you think about streaming if you're going to want to grow your average viewers. It doesn't matter what size you are, if you aren't thinking about the next five steps, then you are setting yourself up to consistently struggle to keep your audience engaged in your stream. Let's go. One of the worst feelings in the world for a streamer is seeing your view count drop while you are live. Or even worse, when you're a brand new streamer, seeing that zero tick up to a one and moments later drop back down to a zero. We've all been there. It sucks. Today, I'm going to be breaking down how I and many streamers organize and plan out their streams so that when anyone joins, they become engaged and stay for the entire stream. This is something that larger streamers do all the time, and it is so simple yet so effective that I bet it has even worked on you and that you've become incredibly engaged by a streamer who has done all of these steps. And the most important part of this entire video is that if you watch all the way to the final tip, you'll realize that you can take your entire stream and make it much more discoverable just from following these five steps. So stick around for that. But first, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Own.TV. You guys should know about Own.TV by now. They are a fantastic resource for any streamer, whether you're just starting out or whether you're pretty experienced and you're just looking to add some more production value to your stream. And the best part about Owned is the fact that they have a huge library of animated and static overlays. And even if you buy the same pack as someone else, they're entirely modular, which means you can pick and choose, move things around and do whatever you want to the pack so you don't look the same as everyone else. We have a link in the description, guys. So if you want to support me, go and support them by clicking that link and checking out some of the Owned.TV packs today. Okay, so the first step to this entire process is something that you guys have heard me say over and over again, but I have to reiterate it for new viewers and for the people who don't take this seriously. And that is understanding your audience intent, which means what your viewers want to see. This is literally the most important step of this entire video. This is your foundation. This is the basics that will set you up so that every decision you make will be effective for growing your stream. That's why I want you to go down to the comment section. And while listening to these next few questions, I'm going to ask you, I want you to write down the answer to them. And if you actually write these answers down and you actually think carefully about these, you will be so much further ahead than every other streamer out there who's just going live and making random content hoping to grow. The first question is, who is the audience you want watching you? I think a lot of people just say to themselves, I want viewers, but that's a huge demographic and you can't appeal to every single person on the planet. You need to niche down and think about exactly who you want watching you. This could be how old is your ideal audience? Are they teenagers or 18 plus? What do they like to do? Do they like anime, painting, Call of Duty, Animal Crossing? What are their viewing habits? Are they the type to actively type in chat or are they lurking while they work, study or take a shit? Next, we have to think about what they like to watch, because if these people like to watch a certain thing that you don't want to play or you don't want to create, well, then you don't have your audience locked in properly. Do they want to watch chill, laid back streams of Stardew Valley? Would they prefer hardcore Apex victories? Are they looking for someone to interact with live? Or are they like my audience who just wants to watch someone be incredibly bad at games for hours on end? The next question is, what streamers already have this audience? Who is this audience already watching? I want you to think about this very carefully. Pick an established streamer that might appeal to your ideal audience and think about what they're doing to attract those viewers. Are they playing brutally challenging games like Ludwig? Are they hilarious and very community focused like Ravs? Do they have an intensely interactive stream like Bajo? And then if you want to take it a step further, there are two more questions you can answer every single stream that will set yourself up even more. Why would viewers click on your stream title and your thumbnail compared to the guy next to you? And then second, why are they going to click on your Discord go live, your Twitter go live or whatever go live you're posting? What makes you special? What makes them want to click on you? When you're just starting out, a lot of the answers to these questions are going to be based on what type of content creator you want to be and what type of content creators you already watch. And that is totally fine. But it is so important if you want to become a good streamer and a good content creator to take a step back and think of it from an audience's perspective. Think of it from a viewer's perspective, because that's how you start to understand what they want to watch and how they're going to get engaged with you. Last time I talked about this concept, I had a few people say to me, I completely disagree, LJ. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't just try and constantly appeal to your audience. That's what being a content creator is, though. You are a product and you are selling that product to a niche or a demographic. If you find out that everyone loves buying chocolate chip ice cream, but you don't like chocolate chip ice cream, so you're going to buy pistachio ice cream for your shop, well, you're just killing your business. That's the same thing. You need to think about your audience. Now, if you don't want to comment down below because it's comment bait or whatever, then that is totally fine. Write all of this down on a piece of paper instead. Or put it in a notebook or put it somewhere where you have to think about the answers to these questions. And if you don't want to do any of that, then stop watching this video. 
because nothing I say in this video is going to help you and nothing anyone says in any other video is going to help you moving forward because you need to think about who the audience is that wants to watch you and how you're going to appeal to them if you want to grow as a content creator. That's just a fact. For those of you who have written it down though, and for those of you who have thought about their ideal audience, this next step is perfect for you. And now you have to completely change the way you look at streaming. I see so many new creators say, well, I was going to be playing games anyway, so I may as well stream it. No, wrong. That is not how this works. They are completely different. Streaming is content creation and creating content means providing value and essentially telling a story. Much like your stream, stories have a beginning, a middle and an end. And that means early on in your stream, you need to establish what your goal of that stream is going to be so that people have a reason to want to stick around all the way through. The same way in this video, I established that there were two reasons to stick around to the end. The first was that this video was going to completely change how you looked at streaming and give you the ability to keep people engaged for your entire stream. And the second, which is still coming up, was the fact that the final tip would make you so much more discoverable than everyone else who's not thinking about this. Setting up and establishing a goal at the start of your stream or at any content is incredibly crucial for your audience retention. A few example goals could be something like Ludwig, who says things like, I am beating this brutally hard game today in X time frame. Or if you're a music streamer, we'll learn this particular song today. Or if you're an art streamer, painting Master Chief as if he was Waluigi. Or maybe you're just chatting streamer and you have some easy content like, I'm ranking every single type of chip flavor today. Or when I did my Dark Souls events, I said I am beating the first three bosses tonight. Cater your goal to your audience so that you're thinking about what they want to see and what they're gonna stick around for. So goals are pretty important if you want people to stick around and watch your entire stream. But you also have to remember that goals just aren't fun or rewarding if there's no stakes as well. After all, if you don't complete your goal, if you lose, but nothing is lost, well, that's not really losing. And it's also not overly entertaining either. Probably the most common example of stakes that you've seen across all of Twitch is, I will do X or else I will gift subs. Or it could be something else. If I don't finish this painting of Waluigi as Master Chief today, then I will have to paint Wario as Cortana. Now I'm saying stakes here rather than the word punishment because I think stakes fits more types of streamers. It doesn't always have to be a bad thing. It could just be something like, I'm revealing childhood photos, or I'll make someone VIP. Playing community games next week if I lose. Or hey, I'll have to name my character after someone in chat. For my Dark Souls event, the stakes were a punishment though. It was beating the first three bosses, or I have to dye my hair purple at the end of that stream. There are so many options you can set for your goal and for your stakes. You just have to make sure that they're creative and appealing to your audience. You're starting to see why understanding your audience is so important for content creators now, right? Because everything you do is either going to engage or disengage viewers from your stream. And you have to be comfortable with that and you have to be able to make confident decisions with what you're going to do to make sure you keep people engaged. Just like how goals are meaningless without stakes, well, stakes are kind of meaningless without hurdles to overcome. If you set the goal that you have to beat three bosses in Dark Souls or else you're dying your hair, but then you sail through really smoothly without any kind of hurdles or any kind of difficulty, well, that's a kind of a boring stream. So if you wanna set up a really good story for your stream, then you need to have those hurdles to overcome. A lot of these hurdles can be natural. For example, in video games, they'll have bosses, puzzles, and challenges to try and stop you. If you're doing art, it takes a long time. Music is hard to learn. So there are things that will naturally be hurdles. But you can take this a step further as well. For example, you could set up audience interaction to become your hurdles. I've talked about my Dark Souls event a lot, but it's just a really good example of how to integrate this. For 100 bits, you could make your audience force you to drop your controller. Or if you're an art streamer, 250 bits and you have to change colors to whatever they pick. There are ways for you to make your audience interact and engage. I think Bajo does this very well with just his general overlay. Moving on though, before I show you guys how setting your streams up like this will set you up to be so much more discoverable than any other creator on this platform. First, we have to talk about payoffs. The hardest part about goals or payoffs is that no matter who joins your stream, whether it's at the beginning, middle or end, that person needs to instantly understand what the goal of that stream is to become engaged. If they don't understand what the goal is, if they don't understand what is happening, then often they will disengage and try and find something that suits their needs better. One of the easiest ways to look at this is just setting your title to be the goal and the stakes and the challenge. By doing this, it essentially gives people all the information they need instantly. And titles are also very important. For example, I have a video all about how to set up your stream title to be engaging and clickable. I have it linked at the top of the description. And hey, here's a really unbiased comment from someone who's not me 
So if you really do want to see if it's a good video, there you go. So if you've set your goal up, you've set your stakes up, and you've set your hurdles up, well then no matter what, you're going to have a successful stream. And the best part is whether you succeed or fail at your goal, it doesn't actually matter. Because if you succeed, it means you've overcome hurdles and created engaging content. And if you fail at your goal, then that doesn't matter either because the stakes that you set up will have to be paid out because you'll look like an idiot at the end of your stream with purple hair because you couldn't beat three Dark Souls bosses in the first night. Either way, the audience sees great content which makes them stick around and enjoy the stream for longer. Okay, so the final tip is here, the one that is going to completely change how discoverable you are. You know how people keep saying to you that you need a YouTube channel if you're looking to grow on Twitch. And then you're kind of sat there thinking, but how do I make my stream into discoverable, entertaining content? Well, this formula is actually the best way to set up your stream to become a YouTube video. Because by streaming like this, you've essentially created a script for your entire video. You've got your goal and your opener where you establish it. That is the start of your video. And then you've got your conclusion, your payout and your stakes. And that is the end of your video which means all you have to do is place those two things in and then work your way through creating highlights and all the best bits and telling a story with the journey that you went on and bam, you've created a perfect YouTube video with a good structure that keeps people hooked and engaged for the end. Beginning, middle, end. Hook, content, payoff. Every single piece of content out there follows this exact formula and you need to be following this exact formula as well. Now, I know there is going to be someone in the YouTube comments who says, LJ, uh, there are thousands of streamers out there who don't do this and they're successful. And hey, you're right. There are content creators out there who can be a lot more free with it and generally still create good content. But the only thing I have to say to that is I'm not as talented as them. So I have to put a lot more work in if I'm willing to grow and I want to actually make this my career. But hey, that's just me. Maybe you can go live. Maybe you can start streaming. Maybe you don't have to think about your audience at all and you'll be fine. I'm going to get so many sassy comments on this video. If you watched 100%, comment sassy down below.